All right, President Biden wrapping up the three-day NATO summit this week with a press conference where he tried his best to reassure the masses that he is staying in the race. And President Biden didn't shy away from addressing former President Trump at one point saying, quote, where's Trump been riding on his golf cart, filling out his scorecard before he hits the ball? Well, the focus will be on former President Trump next week as he's expected to announce his vice president pick at the Republican National Convention, which kicks off on Monday. Joining us now is our very own Rick Newman. And Rick, last hour we were focused a lot about President Biden and where that all, or, and, and I guess how that has played out this week, clearly really driving the conversation surrounding the 2024 election. But what about President Trump next week? What are we expecting to hear at the convention? Uh, well, as you point out, I mean, the big bit of suspense in the Trump campaign is who is his vice presidential pick going to be? And then once we know who it is, we won't care. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's, just to remind everybody, I mean, this is the last bit of suspense in, in the Trump campaign for a while. And Trump has been strangely silent, for him anyway, during the last two weeks, sort of letting the press chew up Joe Biden after his terrible de debate performance. So, I mean, you know, the reporting on this is it's down to three people probably. There could be a surprise, but Doug Burgum, who's the uh, sort of person, the governor of North Dakota, who no one has really heard of until now, Marco Rubio, the senator from Florida, possibly J.D. Vance, the uh, senator from Ohio. Um, and the way I think about this is in 2016, um, Mike Pence probably did help Trump a little bit with the evangelical vote, because Pence yeah. is an evangelical and um, even, it, it, Trump is not a natural person for evangelicals to get behind, okay? Um, and he, at least he wasn't then, and I think he still isn't now. So he's, I mean, he's not going to have that this time around based on um, the, the, you know, the reporting on who the possible uh, VP picks are. So what is, this, what is his VP pick going to do for him? I'm not really sure it'll do anything for him. Um, Marco Rubio could... Um, perhaps help get more Hispanics to vote for Trump. But Rubio's from Florida. That's already a red state. J.D. Yeah. Vance from Ohio, also a red state. Doug Burgum from North Dakota, also a red state. So I'm not sure if those are the picks. Now, it could be somebody else. Um, but if it's one of those people, I'm just not sure that juices the Trump campaign very much. I guess I would add one more thing. We're, every, everybody's so focused on how old Joe Biden is. Um, and important to know is his vice president, is his vice president up to taking the job if he can't. Same is true for Trump. I mean, Trump is 78, so you have to think the same thing about his vice president, whoever it turns out to be. It has to be somebody, uh, at least voters will think, well, if that guy or woman has to step in, he or she would be able to do it. It points to something I've been asking you about, Rick, which is the strategy behind who we're putting on the ticket, right? And <laughs> You with, think there's a strategy? <laughs> oh, well, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, that's the question. We had some reporting from other outlets this morning talking about how uh, major Democrats are frustrated that there wasn't more clarity from the White House about Biden's age slips. Yep. But how, we all knew that this was, a que this was a question four years ago. I don't understand that continued talking point. Um, well, <laughs> I mean, I made a joke about is there a strategy, but there is no strategy on the Democratic side about who the candidate should be. It's Joe Biden. I mean, he and that's normal. I mean, if an incumbent president wants to run for reelection, he runs for reelection and you can't argue. With it. I mean, I mean, you know, Lyndon Johnson dropped out in 1968 um, because of the Vietnam War. He just decided that uh, he had he had to go and he probably would lose if he ran. The Democrats ended up losing anyway. So that was one instance where the, but remember in that case, the incumbent chose to withdraw. Yeah. The party didn't say you gotta go, he, the, the incumbent chose. And just, I mean, honestly, as long as Joe Biden, um, I mean, he could be senile. And as long as he is saying, I'm running, he's running. I mean, it's really hard to derail an incumbent who says I'm running. Now, um, Biden hinted at this press conference yesterday uh, we got different language out of Biden yesterday. So he, number one, he demonstrated that he is aware of everything we're all saying. He's not, he's not, you know, completely insulated from all of these concerns. He even kind of suggested that, I mean, I think the way he phrased it was, if the right people come to him and tell him he needs to withdraw, then maybe, maybe he might listen to them. Um, I guess the right people are, include his wife, Jill Biden, uh, and other family members, and I'm not sure who else counts, but um, Biden's it. Biden's it until he decides not to be. I also want to quickly ask you about how this impacts the broader election space. How much does this kind of back and forth squabbling impact the potential for Republican sweep heading into November? 
I mean, the big thing, the, the big problem that Democrats have right now is we are not talking about Donald Trump uh, and what Donald Trump's vulnerabilities and foibles might be. Um, the Biden campaign is trying like mad. I mean, they, they keep, they're running ads, they keep putting out um, press releases talking about this plan the 2020 Project 2025 plan at the Heritage Foundation, which is to like completely remake the whole government of the United States in, into some kind of like conservative movement, get rid of half the civil service and do all these things. Uh, Biden is, they are trying to get the message back on what they say are all the terrible things Trump would do. That's not where we're at right now. Um, just to push this forward uh, into the fall, um, I think by the end of August, we are going to know it's either going to be Joe Biden or it's going to be somebody else. And at that point, there's, it's going to have to be final unless, unless there's a health emergency. Um, and then probably we will be talking more about the issues, or maybe we will, and less about Biden's age. But that all depends on how Biden performs. Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he, he showed us a little more vulnerability yesterday. I think that needs to continue. He needs to, you know, he said, for example, you know, I hurt my foot. I didn't wear the boot when I broke my foot or something like that. And that's why I'm, that's why I'm kind of walking around with this shaky foot. I mean, I, I didn't know that mm -hmm. until he said it. Um, so um, if he is a little more forthcoming and he, and he keeps passing, the, if he can pass the test every time he talks in public, I don't know that he can, but then we will be talking more about issues and less about Biden. But unfortunately for him, he's not getting younger. He's only getting older. What do you think the strategy should be to bl blunt some of the inroads that former President Trump has really made? It seems like, at least from the polling with the younger voters and minority voters, I, I guess, is there a strategy there? And, and is there confidence that President Biden will be able to do that? Or would that really need to come from some of the other possible candidates that have been voted if he were to step aside? Well, I mean, what the Biden campaign would love to do is get this, uh, this election back on the issues that they think are winning issues for them, um, abortion. I mean, the, the, when the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade last year, I mean, a, a lot of analysts thought, oh, Republicans are toast yeah. in the next, you know, X number of elections. The Democrats want to get back there. Um, really, I think this is also really important overlooked at the moment. The quality of the campaign that each candidate runs is also hugely important. Just remember, we're talking about six or seven swing states, swing voters in swing states, and turnout yeah, I mean, the de everybody knows this in the campaigns. Turnout in places like Philadelphia, Milwaukee, and Detroit is absolutely crucial. Um, and if if uh, if the Biden campaign can get high turnout in those in those cities, those those are mostly Democratic voters, and that'd be good for them. So Biden did make a point. No, no one's paying attention. He said we have a, we have a, more than a thousand offices. We have all these volunteers. Um, the quality of the you know they call they call the ground campaign really matters. When you're when you when when it's coming down to small numbers of votes in swing districts and swing states, so to some extent, getting people who are inclined to vote for Biden, just getting them out to vote in the first place, is what the Biden campaign needs to be doing. All right, Rick Newman, always great to talk to you. Thanks so much Thanks, for joining guys. us here this morning.